yeah, we back. We back. Now, today, man, we're going to be talking about Niger has cut diplomatic ties with the United States. Now, another chapter in the saga, another installment in the series. After cutting diplomatic ties with France months back, now Niger has turned its sights on the United States. A few days ago, the United States has sent a delegation with high-level diplomats, high-level military men such as General Langley and other agents of the State Department. And one thing I love the most about this whole entire drama surrounding nations such as Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger is that they dispelled that myth, they dispelled that falsehood that African presidents or leaders of black nations have no choice but to bow down to the Western powers. I've always believed that, no, you're not obligated to do anything. You can do whatever the hell you want as long as you're willing to take whatever consequences come with that, right? You don't have to bow down to France. You don't have to bow down to the West. You don't have to bow down to these so-called Western colonial powers. You can stand up, pump your chest and hold your nuts and say, fuck you. You know what I mean? You can say that. You can do that. But because we've been content with giving African presidents, African leaders, black leaders, the out the exit from having accountability in their decision making by saying they had no choice in the matter no you do have a choice you can tell the white man fuck you you know what i'm saying you, you you can do that if you want to if you really want to so that's the one thing we've dispelled in this whole series but anyways man let's get into it man as you can see take a look up on the screen the military government in niger announces an end to the military relationship with the united states let's jump straight into the article the military government ruling Niger, which until last year was seen as a major ally of the United States and West Africa, announced Saturday on state television that it was ending its military relationship with the United States. The announcement by a spokesperson for the government, which overthrew Niger's democratically elected president last year, came directly on the heels of a visit to the capital by U.S. Secretary of State Mali Fee, Assistant Secretary of State, I should say the State Department's top official for African affairs, and General Michael Langley, who is the head of the U.S. military operations in Africa. That is a black man. Yes, a black man is the uh, the chief defender of American interests on uh, the African continent. Similar to how you had black men who were agents in the CIA carrying out intelligence operations in Africa, such as Daryl Blocker, who was actually in the running to be the Secretary of Defense, but he actually lost that to another man, I believe, I forget his name, something Lloyd, I forget his name, you know, the current Secretary of Defense, who is also a black man. So uh, when we hear people like Tariq Nasheed talk about Pan-Africanism doesn't work, he never talks about this side of the game, where you have black men who are actually the chief defenders of American imperialism overseas. Now, let's continue. The mission was among diplomatic efforts by the United States to find ways to work with the military governments in the region, where violence wrought by Islamic extremists has in recent years rapidly escalated. Now, like I told you, when these governments came to power, the United States said we ain't acknowledging these governments, these are illegitimate governments, these are fraudulent governments, and they, they do not respect democracy, so we will not acknowledge their existence. Well, guess what? When you stand on business, when you say we don't give a fuck what you're talking about, we don't give a fuck what you think, we are here to stay, guess what? They have no choice but to take the knee. They have no choice but to bend the knee and bow down and get with the program. You know what I'm saying? At first, they were like, listen, we sanctioning shit, we sanctioning them, we're not acknowledging them, they're illegitimate, they're not democratic. Now they're saying we're trying to work with the military governments because you have no choice in the matter. You have no fucking choice in the matter, all right? We got to stop this mentality of, oh, the white man got all the power, the white man got all the leverage. No, we, the black man got leverage too. The black man got power too. Now let's continue. In the statement read on state TV, Amadou Abdurrahman, the military spokesman for the government, denounced with force the condescending attitude of the head of the recent U.S. delegation, which he said had undermined the long relationship between the two countries. Wow, so I'm assuming, because I mean, General Langley was the person they sent. They sent the black man over to negotiate with the military government. So apparently, you know, General Langley was doing a little tap dancing on behalf of the white man, you know what I'm saying, defending American interests. So I'm assuming the black men in Niger who control the government was like, listen, get the fuck out of here, boy. You know what I'm saying? Talking all that dumb shit. <laughs> get the fuck out of here before we smack the fuck out you, boy. You know what I'm saying? General Langley probably went over to Niger talking like a drill sergeant. And them boys in Niger probably was confused. Like, yo, who the fuck this, who the fuck he talking to? You know what I'm saying? Who he talking to? <laughs> lower your tone, you little nigga. Lo lower your voice. Lower your voice. You know what I'm saying? Lo lower your voice. When you back home, you don't talk like that to the white man. So don't come over here talking like that to the black man. Let's continue. More than 1,000 U.S. soldiers are stationed in Niger, according to the military. And the United States operates a drone base worth over $100 million, by the way. A very expensive piece of military technology. 
a drone base in the country's north that officials say is vital for surveillance of extremist groups in the Sahel, which runs across Africa just below the Sahara Desert. U.S. military officials say that the base, which was built six years ago for $110 million, has been vital for monitoring extremist groups connected to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State, which have increasingly made Africa, rather than the Middle East, their main theater. In an interview earlier this year, General Langley warned that if the United States closed the drone base, the move would be impactful in Niger and the region and for the United States' broader counterterrorism strategy. If we cannot see, then we cannot sense, he said. If we lose our footprint in the Sahel, that will degrade our ability to do active watching and warning, including for homeland defense. Now, unfortunately, uh, those of us who have a pan-Africanist ideology, we have to come to the reality that there's going to be black men on the other side, standing side by side with the white boys to defend the white man's interests. You know, we just got to accept that. You know what I'm saying? We just got to accept that. Um, it is what it is. You know, like I said, it is what it is for some for some men. Nationalism will supersede um, racial identity, just like for some people, religion supersedes racial identity, just like for some people, you know, a lot of things supersede racial identity. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the reality of the fact. It's a reality of the fact. Um, you know, we just have to come to terms with that. That doesn't mean that we abandon our ideology of pan-Africanism, but we have to understand that, as always, there's going to be black men on the other side standing side by side with our adversaries pointing the gun at us. So anyway, let's continue. The U.S. delegation visit coincided with the start of Ramadan, a month of dawn to dust fasting and intense prayer for Muslims. Niger's leader, General Abdurrahman Chiani, refused to meet them. A United States press conference at the embassy in Niger was canceled. Now, I did hear about that when the United States sent their delegation, the the military leader did not even show up to the meeting. You know what I'm saying? He, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He stood them boys up, you know what I'm saying? Like a dusty hoe, you know, but it is what it is. I think the prime minister was the one that stood in the meeting, but the leader, they never got to meet the actual general who's in charge of the country. He was like, nigga, it's Ramadan. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of my face with that dumb shit. Uh, but yeah, man, that's what it is right now. So France and the United States has been removed from Niger. And if you ask me, this seems to be a self-inflicted blow because the reason given by the spokesman for the military government was that the American delegation arrived and they spoke to them during the negotiations in a disrespectful tone, in a condescending manner, right? They were not polite. They were not respectful. They were disparaging. They were derogatory. They were patronizing. They were snobbish. You know what I mean? They were arrogant, you know, which is typical which is typical in how they deal with black nations, African nations. Very, very arrogant tone, right? Very arrogant tone. So, you know, this is good. This is good to show that, like I said, you don't got to bow down. And if the roles were on the other foot, if, it, if the roles were switched, the United States would operate in the same manner. If the, if the United States felt they were disrespected in negotiations, if they felt that their interests were being threatened, if they felt that if they felt that the other person was being adversarial to their interests, they would have no issue immediately sanctioning somebody, cutting diplomatic relations, cutting financial aid, cutting off the money supply, cutting off the assistance with a, with a snap of a finger. So the black man got to operate in the same way. Soon as you get a hint of disrespect, nigga, fuck you, fuck out my face while I smack the fuck out you, boy. You better pack your bags and be on a plane leaving tomorrow, bitch. That's how the black man got to operate. That's how the black man gonna get his respect in the world. The black man is not going to be respected by always trying to compromise, by always trying to tolerate disrespect. I don't care if they sent General Langley as the representative. Fuck General Langley. Now, I'm not going to say fuck General Langley because they might take my channel down. You know, he's a very high ranking general in the in the military. But you know what I'm saying? Fuck him. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who they send. I don't care if they send a black man to serve as the front man. It doesn't matter if you feel disrespected. If they approach you without mutual respect as a man, then you should have no issue sanctioning them the same way they would sanction you the same exact way because if you were to take any action that would go against american national interests they would have no issue quickly cutting diplomatic ties cutting financial aid sanctioning your government so you have to sanction them it's about time black men start sanctioning western governments because that's really what's going down when you see france being told to get the fuck out the country that's france being sanctioned that's the united states being sanctioned when you see them tell the United States, pack up that hundred million dollar drone base and throw it in the ocean, nigga. That's called a sanction. In our lifetimes, we're not used to seeing that. We haven't seen shit like that in centuries. Now, we used to do that back in the day, right? When the Europeans came to Africa and they would take certain actions that the African kings did not agree with. Listen, the African kings back in the day had no issue telling the Europeans, listen, tell them Europeans, pack their shit before we go over on the coast and annihilate everybody over there. 
Listen, that's the energy the black man got to carry, the energy of our forefathers. Listen, you are either going to respect our interests and respect us as sovereign men on our sovereign territory, or nigga, get the fuck out. ASAP, tomorrow, hey, pack up your shit and go. Because like I said, the black man has leverage too. The black man has power too. The reason why they over in Niger is not because they want to protect the black man and keep the black man safe. It's because Niger represents a strategic interest for the United States, economically and militarily. The reason why they spent over $100 million building that drone base and that military base over in Niger is not because they love the black men and women of Niger. No, it's because they need to protect the interests of their foreign investors. The energy sector, the mining sector is critical for the United States. So of course they want to protect that. That's why when they kicked out the French, the United States didn't want to take any drastic measures against Niger because they didn't want to mess up that relationship. That's why when France jumped out the window and was like, listen, it's time for military invasion. We don't acknowledge the government. The United States was like, listen, ho, ho, whoa, whoa, hold up, bro. Hold up. You know what I'm saying? We got, we got a drone base over there worth a lot of money. Relax, relax. That's why the United States ended up acknowledging the government of Niger because they were like, listen, fuck it. You know, we got to play ball. We got to play ball. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Like I said, the black man got power too. The black man got leverage too. All right. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't the Western powers that got all the power, man. Listen. It ain't that. It ain't that. A lot of shit comes down to your mentality and your mindset, really. You know, mentality and mindset is really what's holding us back the most, if you want to be honest, man. If you want to be honest, like I said, the inability to hold your nuts and believe in yourself and stop depending on foreign assistance and foreign aid and foreign backing. Believe in yourself, man. Believe in yourself. You have the ability to be self-sustaining and self-sufficient. Believe in yourself, man. Link up amongst your brothers the same way Mali Burkina Faso and Niger foreign, forming their own federation. Link up among your brother. Enrich your own economy, enrich your own regional blocks, and then from your own regional blocks, you can connect with other regional blocks, right? And then do cross continental trade, really build up the continent. And then once you're powerful enough and once you're strong enough, then we can come to the table and sit at the table with these other foreign powers as men and stand tall and say, listen, if you don't wanna if you don't wanna dance to the beat of our drum, if you don't wanna respect our interests and our objectives, then fuck you, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck you, bro. It is what it is, bro. What you gonna do? You gonna invade? Then I dare you. I'm telling you, nigga, I dare you. That's the energy, man. That's what it got to be. That's what it got to be, man. You know, so like I said, the American delegation was sent to negotiate with the military government of Niger, and apparently they didn't have the decency to address them with respect as men. So in typical fashion, the military government in Niger said, listen, General Langley, go tell Joe Biden, pack up his drone base, throw that shit in the ocean, get the fuck out of my face, little nigga. Anyway, man, it's your boy Nefakari, that's Elaine, back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash app up on the screen, and I'm gone. Peace.